That's awesome. Kylie, could you could you talk a little bit about just the portfolio that that Nat Sherman? I mean, obviously briefly, but just give people kind of a snapshot of the portfolio that Nat Sherman has. Yeah. Uh, so, like Michael said, we have the Timeless Collection. We also have the Metropolitan, and then we have the Apoca brand. Um, within those brands there are multiple different lines so like right now we're smoking the timeless limited edition taa 2020 so that is part of the timeless family my personal favorite is the timeless sterling mm -hmm. uh we also have the timeless supreme which is a nicaraguan puro we have the timeless prestige which is a dominican uh the timeless panamericana which is formerly a taa exclusive but we opened it up to everybody. Was it last year? No, year before. Um, and that has just gone off the rails. It's done so well. You guys actually carry that one too. Um, yeah, great stuff. And then in Metropolitan, we've got the Connecticut in the blue box. We have the Maduro in the orange box. We have the Habano in the brown box, which is one of my favorites, uh, Nicaraguan. Uh, and then the host got pulled into Metropolitan with the rebrand. So we have the host natural and the host Maduro. I am just blown away with how well the natural host does. It's unbelievable. Well, well, uh, you, you mentioned the host. The host has been around with the Metropolitan series. Th this has been around for a long time, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Because it's, I can probably worth, it's probably worth pointing out. Um, Metropolitan as a family really is um, our, our core. So most, with the exception of the Metropolitan Habano that Kylie referenced and the Maduro version of Host, the, the Metropolitan Connecticut, Maduro, and, and Host Natural have been manufactured since 1994, 1995. Sure. And when you look at companies as old as we are um, and companies younger than us, the portfolios are, are way wider than ours. Yeah. But I think you would be very hard pressed to find um, brands and blends from the 90s that smoke as true to the flavor of the 90s as ours does. Sure. You, you um, just stole my thunder, actually, because, because I was going <laughs> to say, uh, I remember, because I got into cigars in late 90s, right? And I remember buying the, the Nat Sherman cigars. I still remember the box and everything that they came in. And I remember the only way I knew the difference was the, what color was the clock? Was it the, yep. the blue? Was it the, the aqua? What? So the host, I remember smoking a ton of those. And I was commenting to Cole the other day. I said, what's interesting, is I remember the cigar. It tastes the same as it did back then as it does now. And I don't think people realize how difficult that is to keep that consistency in a cigar for so long. It's a, it's a, it's really a great thing. Absolutely. It's not, it's not an easy thing to do. Uh, and I feel I, Kylie, I interrupted. So I want to okay. sure that, that we talked through, um, we, we, we got through Metropolitan, we got through Timeless, there's a couple more. Uh, and then we have the Apoca line, which you guys carry the Apoca Reserva. Mm -hmm and do very well with that one. Um, oh, yeah. Then we have the Apoca, and then uh, last year at the trade show, we released the Apoca Limited Edition 2019, and I don't think there's many of those left, um, but I know that there are a few left. Sure. And then what am I missing? The, 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 the whole portfolio, when you look at it, um, I, it, it should tell the story that we don't release products for something to do sure um the amount of of discretion to make sure that we bring a product to market that fills a very specific need in a very specific moment in time um i think is a is a key part of our story but more important creating a, a blend or, or a new product is not an easy thing to do in and of itself infinitely more difficult is maintaining that experience year after year because the ingredients are changing every year. Absolutely. Um, and so in order to maintain that same experience, you need great partners to manufacture it. You need incredible inventory. You need incredible palettes and participation. 
to keep track, to make sure that the experience is the same. And there are so many examples when we go back and smoke what I call nostalgia cigars, cigars that I smoked, you know, in the, in the late nineties, early two thousands, when I first started enjoying cigars that were my go-tos that I've sort of evolved away from. And then you have that moment, you walk in the humidor and you're like, man, I haven't smoked one of those. And I don't know how long, let me pick one up. And when you smoke it, it's different. And, and so many people tend to blame themselves first and say, oh, I don't like the same things. My palate has changed. That is false. Your palate is better than it has ever been. Mm -hmm. The product has changed. And, and I believe um, we have the most consistent portfolio in the industry. I really believe that to be true. And when you look at the products we've released, and Kylie mentioned Sterling, what I like about the story of Sterling is not just how great the product is, um, but the time that we released it. So we launched Sterling 2013-2014. It was It's a Dominican-made cigar, relatively mellow, but very full in body, light wrapper, and we released it in... 40, 42, 43, 46 ring gauges. Yep. That was at a time when nothing was released below a 50. Mm -hmm. 60 was middle of the road. Yep. Prices were less than $8. Mm -hmm. And strength and flavor was 10 and above. Yeah. Yeah. We, that was an opportunity where the, the hallmarks – um, the benchmark experiences of that experience, elegant, balanced, opulent, creamy, sophisticated, there was a need to return to that in that moment. And that's what we did. And yeah. Sterling was not inexpensive. It was the most expensive release we did in sizes that were unpopular um, in slide top cabinets that were unpopular. And yet there was a need for that to be done at the highest level. And so we did it. And I remember very specifically meeting with retailers, the IBCPR that year at lunch, going over what we were releasing and encouraging all of them not to buy this product <laughs> because I didn't want to hear that it wasn't going to work. We knew it, but there was a need to bring it to market. Absolutely. But don't buy it if you're not going to sell it. And we sold out of the entire first production at that show. We never thought it would sell. And so it's, it's not our best-selling cigar. There are cigars that are higher volumes, maybe more favorable prices. Um, but the role that cigar plays, not just in our portfolio, but in the humidor of every tobacconist that sells it, that cigar p continues to play the role of the leading trophy in the humidor. Sure. I wanted to ask you too, because I know you deal with Michael, a couple of uh, uh, great, great men in the industry that, that, uh, that you guys work with to make your products in uh, Manuel Quesada and the Placencia family. Um, tell me what it's been like to kind of work with those guys, what those guys are kind of like. I mean, uh, me and Rick know the Placencias, but um, the role that they play in that Sherman and the, and the great products you guys have, have put to market. So the Sherman family and the Casada family have worked together since the 90s with Metropolitan. So there was a pre-existing relationship, family to family, brand to brand. Sure. Um, I had a relationship with the Casadas that dates back to my Davidoff days. Um, and so... That was a natural um, continuation um, taken even, even further because sure. of our work together um, on that Sherman. The Placencia relationship, I had a, I had a relationship, um, casual social business relationship from the Davidoff days, um, but the Placencias and Casadas were much closer um, Casada had already had Casa Magna being made by Placencias. They were purchasing tobacco from the Placencias for years. Um, and so when I joined Nat Sherman, 
that was a relationship that was enhanced immediately because of the pre-existing trust that existed between Placentius and Casadas. Casadas basically vouched for me and said, please go all in to support um, Michael with the Nat Sherman work. And then the third um, is Davidoff in Honduras. Um, so Davidoff acquired the, the Aeroa's business, which was Camacho. Yep. There was a Sherman Aeroa relationship for many years, but there was a Herklotz Davidoff relationship for many years because I had worked with them for nine years. Um, so the ability to carry on a relationship with Davidoff um, after I left as a vendor customer um, uh, relationship was obviously one that was meaningful for me. Uh, so, you know, I think if you look at Quesada, Placencia, and Davidoff, you couldn't have three more different mm -hmm. business models, different scales of business. Um, but if you look at the roles they've played in the success of our business, um, you know, the, the Casadas, I think, um, have been probably the, the most influential in the ability to um, respond to our needs, to be agile enough to allow us to experiment and try new things and try different things. Um, and then Placencia certainly followed suit. Um, with Davidoff, we have not done a tremendous amount of development other than adding the Maduro to the host line. And they've been great partners in maintaining the volumes we need on such a, um, a time-honored product like the host is. Um, but from an innovative standpoint, the commitment of the Casadas and um, the support of the Placencias has been, you know, really tremendous. And then working as closely as I have. So I, prior to five weeks ago, uh, I was in the Dominican every four to six weeks. Nicaragua probably three or four times a year, um, working closely with them on, on not just the product development, but also the product maintenance. Um, so it's been, it's been a, a really a amazing opportunity to, to grow those relationships. Well, this is you, bringing this kind of back around and talking with yeah. the portfolio to, the, to the, the timeless, the TAA right here that we're smoking. I, I got to say, this has such a wonderful slow burn to this thing it's it's amazing i'm only you know i was i was looking at because i have two of them here and i'm basically about a little over an inch and a half into it this thing i mean we're you know 50 minutes into talking here and this thing still has a good 50 minutes to go left you know what what's is, taking you so long I, right and i'm a fast smoker too that's i'm serious. not i'm not yeah. at all but look at it oh my gosh it's great i know it's just the stress <laughs> <laughs> There are, I think there are a few hallmarks to our products and it's difficult to maintain consistent hallmarks when we're manufacturing with three partners in three countries. But if there are hallmarks, I would say that construction across the board um, is incredible. Mm -hmm. um, that obviously equals combustion. But even even the, the way, not that... that the cigars are assembled, meaning um, how the fillers are put together. You know, we, we aren't holding manufacturers to the same uh, folding techniques sure. to make sure that they're the same. Mm -hmm. But I, I would say when you look at draw, resistance in draw, um, how firm the, the cigars are packed, that there is a consistency that ours tend to be on the firm side. Typically people feel our cigars and think, that they're going to be tight, which they're not. Mm -hmm. um, they're, they are well-made, they're filled appropriately. Um, cigars should be firm. Mm -hmm. They shouldn't be soft, they should be firm. Um, they should draw with, a, with enough resistance to control the burn. Controlling the burn keeps the temperature low and keeping the temperature low preserves the flavor um, with the intention that we had. So, softer cigars underfilled burn faster which burn hotter which change the flavor and we're trying to preserve our intentions from the moment we create it to the moment we make it to the moment we give it to you to sell to a customer and a lot of that has to do with 
the the very initial construction of the product, and so you're you are experiencing exactly that. No, the flavor is fantastic, Cole. What I mean, what are you thinking? I, I love it, absolutely love. It. I can't wait for customers to be able to get back and try this. You know, I appreciate too. the strength of it. It's a stronger representation than, I guess, the TAA in the 2019, but it's it's not overwhelming, but it's got, I like older cigars, but I like also the, the, the magnification intensity of the flavor of it to balance it out. I think that's very important as well. We, we did we did 2019 with Quesada. Um, and so, uh, again, in the spirit of trying to keep things innovative, we did 2020 with Placencia. Um, but I, I will tell you the 2019, TAA that we did with Quesada, I brought some to Nicaragua and the Placencias all smoked them um, and members of the people in the factory, everyone was smoking them. Unequivocally, they all said it was the best Dominican Puro they have ever smoked hands down, which I, I would not disagree with that statement. But hearing Nicaraguans say that, who typically favor bolder, fuller, richer expressions the the natural capability of dr tends not to have the same richness and boldness that is a little more natural to nicaragua honduras and cuba but what we were able to achieve in the 2019 um was recognized in the palates of the nicaraguans which i certainly appreciate but i think to your point cole what what the 2020 offers is certainly um, a foundation of richness um, that is inherent to Nicaragua. Um, unique about this blend, we switched the roles. So another hallmark of our products, I believe, is we don't make ass kickers. Mm -hmm. it's, it's philosophically against what we do. So whether you would characterize our cigars to your palate as strong or bold or you would characterize our cigars as milder all of them have a particular level of finesse and grace regardless of strength um, and i think to achieve that is difficult in bolder richer cigars to still create that level of finesse i i can tell you the, the process of creating that um, was not a friendly one at times with the Placencias <laughs> because we were, we were tasting amazing blends, but while they were probably um, very sellable, they weren't in keeping our philosophy of the nest. Um, what we ultimately did, uh, much to their chagrin, but they agreed it worked, the, the filler for this product comes from Jalapa. Yep. Jalapa is a very expensive place to grow tobacco, typically reserved for wrapper. Um, so it would be the equivalent of you wouldn't make a cigar of Connecticut shade filler, um, regardless of the flavor, which probably wouldn't work. Right. But more importantly, the economics don't work. Mm -hmm. I mean, it would be a $400 cigar <laughs> just because of the economics of the, of what it costs to grow that tobacco. So you're talking about really the best of the Lapa, um, which is known for grace and finesse. And we used some higher primings that were, are typically um, not appropriate for wrappers because wrappers need to burn. High primings don't burn as well as low primings. So we used high primings from Jalapa, which have the richness, um, but they also have finesse. And then we went to Esteli, which is typically used for the richness and boldness for filler, yep. the um, but typically lacks grace. Right. And we found the most graceful expressions of Esteli to use as the wrapper, which, you know, there isn't a hell of a lot of it. That's why we only made 650 mazos. <laughs> right. um, but, you know, that's, that's how we're able to achieve what I find um, to be a unique expression, not just within our portfolio, but within Nicaraguan puros in their entirety. I believe this is a very unique expression of Nicaragua. Absolutely. Absolutely. 
So it's, this is this has been fantastic. I can't wait for people to to get a chance to try this, which will be coming soon, correct? Yes. They're shipping. Awesome. We just need to get our doors open now. That's the... <laughs> yeah. Figure out a way to get it. I know. And we'll get them. We'll get them to you. Well, you guys have been wanting the matching bags with it. Yeah. Exactly. Say it again. I think Cole's talking about all the nice bags we have to go with them too. So. Well, and we'll send you more if you need them. Well, listen, I, I can't thank you guys enough, Michael, Kylie, for being on with us today. Um, very enlightening. I mean, this was, I learned new information today, which I thought was fantastic. Getting an opportunity to smoke the new TAA cigar, which is outstanding. People are going to love it. Um, and I just can't thank you guys enough for being on here. So thank you. Absolutely. Well, let me just say too, we can only do as much as we can do. We find the best manufacturers who have the best tobacco. Um, we put it together in a meaningful way. Eventually, though, we have to relinquish possession mm -hmm. and allow them to go free. And imagine the times where um, all that work ultimately is ruined because it's not kept the right way when after we relinquish that possession. Sure. And so we take uh, our retail partnerships very seriously. And we kind of started talking about that early on. But the idea of partnership is critical because you are carrying on the work that we've done to make sure that you can hand it to your customers safely and they can enjoy it the way we intended them to. So having retail partners like you all um, is what allows us to continue to do what we do and grow our business. And so we are certainly grateful for your support, um, not just in times like this, but hopefully for a long future together. Well, like I said earlier, you guys' support early on in this whole, the whole COVID-19 thing was phenomenal. I can't speak high enough. It's something that I for sure am not going to forget. I know Cole won't either uh, in Tobacco Grove in general. So thank you guys again. Um, this has been a treat. I, I loved it, and I learned a lot today, which is great, because then we can give this all to the customers, which is awesome. Yeah. awesome. And it's great to see you both. You know, I mean, with, with, with us not being able to see people, it's, it's great to see familiar faces and meet new faces, too, to, you know, just keep connected. Yeah. Agreed. It's pouring yeah. outside. Otherwise, I'd be smoking one of those with you. So <laughs> next time we do this in person and we smoke a cigar together. Until next time, thank you guys so much for being on. We really appreciate it. Stay safe. And, uh, we'll thank talk you. To you too. Thanks, we'll guys. All right. Thank you, Mike. You guys. Thanks, Take guys. Right Have on. a great day. Yep. You too. Bye. Bye.